We should just pick the hottest, most confident, bad bitch version of ourselves and be that for the rest of the school year. Hi, I'm Rose. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how I did this Cassie Euphoria look from Season 2, Episode 1. This look is part of my Euphoria Zodiac makeup series, so make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss your sign. Jumping right in, I'm using the Hot Tools Titanium Pink Curling Iron. It's a 1 and 1 fourth inch barrel to curl my hair, and I just separated my hair into sections, and I'm curling each piece away from my face. If you guys wanted to jump forward to the makeup, feel free to use the chapters in the timeline below, but I didn't want to leave out this step for those who were curious. And with a bigger barrel, it's really important to at least somewhat set the curls so that they don't fall out. So that's why I'm taking them in my hands and kind of holding them for a second until they curl down and then I'm brushing through when I'm done with the entire section with my fingers. I also kind of rough up the hair from underneath with my fingers to create a little bit of a teasing effect because I didn't want to straight up tease my hair. Then I'm taking my tangled teaser to brush out my top section. For the two pieces that are right in front of my face, I do curl them just slightly differently. Instead of curling them right at the root, you'll see I go to the root quickly and I pull away a few inches and then even the curl itself on the barrel is a little bit more lengthened out. It's not as tight together and I also don't hold it in my hand to let it cool down for as long. That way it'll just be a really loose curl. And then right here you'll see I go right back to curling it at the root and repeat with the rest of the hair on the top section. I'm going to speed us up a little bit. And right here I'm brushing through all of the curls with the tangle teaser. I actually definitely regretted doing this because as you can see it straightened out a lot of my hair but I just kind of played with them to try to get some of the curls back and later I do go back in and recurl some pieces. And Cassie has two statement barrettes in the front of her hair, so I'm just picking some and pinning my hair back here. And it also helped to keep my hair pulled back while I applied my makeup. Just recurling a couple pieces, and for the makeup, we're starting out with Too Faced Born This Way Multi Use Sculpting Concealer in the shade Snow. And I'm just going in and lightly covering problem areas. The Euphoria director Sam Levinson actually pretty famously banned foundation from the set this season so I really tried to stick with that theme and Cassie's makeup especially was all of a very natural skin look, very dewy, she was flushed so I didn't try to cover up too too much, just any little spots because Sydney Sweeney's skin doesn't have any blemishes, she doesn't have any freckles or beauty marks so I just wanted to emulate that. Here's the finished concealer, and I do go back in and add just a touch more for my under eye. And I'm blending that in with a damp beauty blender. This is the beauty blender from the Makeup by Ariel and Morphe Brushes collab, and it works really well. I'm actually liking it more than my go-to beauty blender, which is the Real Technique sponge. And I'm just focusing on pushing all of that product into the skin. Again, I want it to be as camouflaged and as natural looking as possible. And for this spot here, the product had dried up a little bit, so I'm using my finger, since it's a little bit warmer, to move the product and get it to be sort of a natural finish there. And then I kind of switch back and forth between my finger and using the damp sponge. And just taking a little bit of extra time on my eyes since they're slightly hooded and I want to prevent creasing as much as possible. Next I'm taking my favorite foundation. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy foundation in the shade 110 Porcelain. And I'm using this Lancome concealer brush and this is how I like to apply my foundation recently. So I take it on the back of my hand, I pick it up with the brush, and then I brush it in downward strokes all over my face. Not trying to put too much on my cheeks because they have a little bit of a rosy flush anyways and Cassie definitely has that in this scene so I want to keep that as much as possible. You could totally take a bigger concealer brush or a flat brush to apply your foundation. I just opted for a smaller brush so that I could have a lot more control over how much product I was placing and where and I am taking the damp beauty sponge. I have a little acne mark in the center of my forehead so I didn't want the foundation to sit on that and start to grab at it so I just blended that area out right away. 
Also, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but my boyfriend was taking a nap, so that moving body in the background, um, yeah, that's him. <laughs> and here I am blending out the foundation on my nose. I put a little bit above my lips, taking a small amount down to my chin. And the area I actually focused the majority of the foundation, ironically, was on my neck from my jawline to my neck because that can be a really big dead giveaway that you're wearing product. And again, I wanted this to look as natural as possible, so my goal was to make sure that I had a, a seamless blend as possible from my face to my neck. Next, I'm taking my all-time favorite powder. Look at me struggling here, y'all. I'm such a noob. I couldn't get this in the viewfinder right. Is that even the right way to say that? I don't know. Anyways, that was the Nikia Joy Cosmetics Velvet Finishing Powder. It is the best powder I've ever used. I've tried a lot, and this is just the best. I heard another person who recommended this say that on days when their foundation doesn't look good or their makeup's just like picking up, it's patchy, you can apply this powder and it seriously brings it all together and somehow makes it look better. And it smells like cookies, so I don't think you can beat that. It's really good, you should give it a try. I'm only focusing this powder really around my eyes because I want to keep all the wetness and the dewiness and the sweatiness that Cassie's skin had in that scene on my face. Next, I'm taking the Milani Cheek Kiss in the shade Blushing Berry 130. It's a cream blush and I'm dotting that all over my cheeks. And with any cream blush, it's pigmented, so just be careful, build it up slowly. I even cleaned off my finger here before I went to tap it in, just because I didn't want to build up too much too quickly. I'm also taking this blend up closer to my eyes, maybe a little bit lower than I would normally take it, closer to my nose. It's not just focused on the apples of my cheeks, because I want this to be more of a natural flush like Cassie had in the scene, versus a professionally applied blush for a makeup look. And I'm taking a little bit on the sides of my nose as well to really give that natural, I'm flushed, I'm sweaty, I'm drunk, I'm hot sort of appearance. And of course, you can always take your beauty blender and just make sure everything's pushed into your skin and smoothed together. And I pop some on my lips as well and I was purposely going outside of the borders of my lips as you can see. When creating this look, makeup artist for Euphoria Donnie Davy said that she was focusing on making the lips look like Cassie had been in a makeout session or that she'd been nervously biting at them. So don't be afraid to go outside the lines a little. Next I'm taking the SAIE Glowy Super Gel Lightweight Dewy Highlighter in the shade Star Glow and I am putting that everywhere. I'm starting with the high points of my cheeks where we naturally would have some glow and shine. And let me just add, this is by far the most natural highlighter I have ever used. It really does just look like your skin has a sheen to it. There's no glitter. There is no texture, which is something I struggle with a lot. Someone having dry, acne prone skin. It just blends in so beautifully. It feels great. It's super light. I can't rave enough about this highlighter. The only reason you might not like the highlighter is if you prefer something that's like, bam, oh, it's obvious that you're wearing a makeup product. This is so natural though. So I added it to my cheekbones. I added it to my upper lip. I added it to my nose. And I'm just using my fingers to apply and blend it out for now. I'll eventually take my beauty blender and I will make sure everything's pushed into the skin and really seamless. I also bring it up here to the forehead. I put it on my chin. If you look at Cassie in that scene, she has just sheen and shine everywhere on her face, so that's what I'm going for. And I'm also taking just a little bit above my brow bone and sort of up onto my temple. And working on the other side of my face here, you can really just see what that highlighter does. It's gorgeous, it's my favorite. Next, I'm taking my Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer and Butter Biscuit, and I'm using that to lightly contour. Again, I wanna keep this super natural. I don't want it to look like, bam, she has contour, or even bam, she's wearing any base products at all. So I'm just keeping it light. I'm applying it with my finger because I find that that has the most natural results possible. I'm lightly contouring my nose, under my cheeks, 
the sides of my temples. And my septum is slightly uneven, so you'll see me focus a little bit of product on that, just trying to even it out a little bit. And I quickly switch fingers here because I'm getting that creasing that I always get on my eyelids, but that's okay. Here I'm starting to take the product onto my septum, again just to correct for the slight asymmetry. The left side of my nose just comes down a hair further than the right, so I'm focusing a little bit more product on the left and I think that that evens it out. And then I take my damp beauty blender and I just push it into the skin to make sure that it's not evident any of the contour that I've just done. I have never been a fan of a cream contour or a cream bronzer. I don't know if it's just the products that I've tried, which I've tried several. They always seem to just grab at the texture in my skin. They're not easy for me to blend out, so something about this Fenty Beauty Contour bronzer it's really easy, so if you're dry like me or you have textured, acne-prone skin, definitely give this one a try. And I've been loving lately just taking the bronzer and really pushing it into my hairline when I'm doing a light sort of bronze or contour on my forehead. I feel like it makes it more natural and seamless, and it's a lot easier to do with a cream product than it is with a powder. Sometimes I'll even take the bronzer onto a brush and go up into my hairline and make sure that it's all matching. And this is definitely my favorite contour trick to do, which is going underneath of my jaw, going underneath of my chin, and trying to recede or push away visually any sort of extra skin or extra fat. And it works really well. I will say, if you were doing this makeup look to record for TikTok or to be on video, you can get away with doing this more heavily. If you're going out, of course you can still do it, but just like with any look, you're going to want to make it a little bit more natural. And then I'm taking my beauty blender and just pushing everything into the skin. And with all of the steps that we've done, I did move away a little bit of concealer off of that acne spot, so I'm just reapplying it here with my finger. Next, I'm taking the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter in Ginger Binge slash Moscow Mule. And I dip into both sides of this product and I just go ham with it. And I know I've used a lot of favorites in this video, but this might be my favorite out of all of them. This is also the Madison Beer Blush. Madison Beer Blush, yeah, I said that right. And I found out about that, I think, off of her Vogue videos, one of those viral Madison Beer makeup tutorial videos, and I'm obsessed with it. It works really well here also to create a really natural looking flush. Similar to the cream blush, I'm going a little bit higher and a little bit lower than I normally would if I was doing like a curated, a more perfectionist makeup look. This is supposed to be natural, so I'm taking it everywhere and going outside the lines of where I normally would to emulate how our cheeks really flush. I'm taking it really close to my nose. I'm taking it all over the nose. I'm taking it really high up on the cheeks. I'm getting closer to the eyes. I'm going on the forehead. Just go everywhere. I'm even going on the chin. Look at that. Under the chin, I'm going crazy. This brush is also from the Makeup by Ariel and the Morphe brush collab that they did. I really love it for applying blush. And then I'm taking my Beauty Blender and just pushing all that product into the skin because I need this to look as natural as possible. And let's speed up a little bit because y'all get the gist. And I can't even show y'all this palette. I know this is a blast from the past, and if I was to show y'all, believe me, it looks like that. It's the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette. I'm taking the shade Candied Peach and Summer Yum, and I mix them together on this little round crease brush from Jessup. I got these off Amazon forever ago. They're super inexpensive, so if you're a beginner at makeup, I definitely recommend them. I've had these for I don't know, maybe 10 years, and they don't shed, they're really good brushes. And I'm just using windshield wiper motions, you guys know the drill, to go ahead and build up that peachy color all over the lids. I focus a little bit more of the Summer Yum shade here on that outer V to really start to build up some depth 
to this eye look and I'm gonna speed us up a little bit because you guys get the gist and we can't take 10 years on this. I blend a whole lot so if you're recreating this look just make sure it's a seamless blend. The box tied it up Swear. with 42 seconds left and then the random scored again and won again. Huh. And just like we've been doing all throughout this look, you're going to want to take your beauty blender and push even the eyeshadow into the skin. On a small eyeliner brush, I'm starting to plan out that wing. So I'm using a heavier amount of Summer Yum, still a little bit of candied peach, and just a tiny bit of charm, I'm sure. If you have slightly hooded eyes like I do, you're going to want to do what I'm doing here. Which is while I'm building up my eyeshadow shape, I am switching between opening and closing my eyes. Mainly opening your eyes is going to be important here because if you have hooded or slightly hooded eyes or double hooded eyes, you know the pain of doing an immaculate, a beautiful detailed eyeshadow look and then you open your eyes and it's all been swallowed into your eyelids. So I am building up that shape. It almost has a little bit of a bat wing shape I'm noticing in the playback. And that's totally fine if you have hooded eyes like me or if, even if you don't and you think that that's a cool look. And I am building it up while I'm blending it out on that same eyeliner brush and still using the combination of those three shades. My wing is a little bit darker than Cassie's so if you wanted this to be more true to the reference, you can totally go lighter than me. I would just omit using Charmed I'm Sure and use more of Summer Yum and Candy Peach. You'll want to start bringing that shadow onto the actual eyelid and making it act more like an eyeliner. Bring it on thick onto the lid and later we're going to add an even darker color. But for now, I'm taking that three color combo onto my bottom lash line. And going back with that original eyeshadow brush that you used to lay down your peach color, Take it and blend out the wing that you just made to make sure that it's seamless. And I wanted a little bit more depth to my wing so I'm just taking a little bit more of Charmed I'm sure and very lightly adding it here. And this is a great shot where you can tell just how peachy and how built up that eyeshadow wing is. I'm adding a little bit more of Charmed I'm Sure underneath of the eye and when it gets a little bit too built up then I take my finger and I just blend it. Now I'm taking Charmed I'm Sure and using it as my top eyeliner. And I will take it and extend it out past my lash line and into the wing. And I'm adding just a touch here to the inner corner and just making sure that it goes seamlessly across my lash line. Next I'm taking a L'Oreal Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner and I'm loading up this small angled brush and I'm essentially tight lining my upper lash line. I'm not quite flipping out my eyelid, I didn't really want to do that just in case I would touch and kind of disturb that perfect blend we worked so hard to get. But you can do the same thing with a small angled brush like I'm doing here. Another reason I don't love taking the upper eyelid and just flipping it out and putting the eyeliner straight on is a lot of times I notice that transfers to my bottom waterline so by rubbing it into the lash line here like I'm doing I don't get that transfer as much. And the most exciting part I am using Kiss Lash Glue. Let it get tacky for about 5 seconds or so, maybe 10 seconds and then you'll be able to attach your rhinestone, it has great hold. For that first rhinestone, I just put it where my bottom lash line, where that ends at, if it was to go up another millimeter, that's where you're going to want that first rhinestone, almost in the corner. And then put the second one about a centimeter away and the third one about a centimeter away from here. And you'll see I wasn't as happy with the placement right here, yeah, so I'm pulling off that, that last rhinestone and then you can just pull off the um, eyelash glue like I did here. I am going back in and just using my little eyeliner brush to replace the eyeshadow that I pulled off and I am repositioning that little rhinestone. And why do I feel like I put it right back in the same place? I don't know. Let's see. 
Okay, no. So I think the first time it was a little bit too curved for me. This time I was trying to straighten it out. And now I'm going in for the second layer of rhinestones. I will add that if you look at the reference picture for Cassie, I use one less rhinestone just because of my hooded eyelids. If I was to place that third rhinestone on the top layer of rhinestones, then when I opened my eyes it wasn't going to show. So you can always adjust a makeup look to suit your eye shape and the natural features of your own face, and that's what I had to do here. About 50% of the time I will push on the rhinestones with the tweezers. Honestly, with this lash glue you don't have to do that, but I didn't want them to be like sitting off my face and not sitting right. Oh, and it looks so good. That's the, the finished rhinestone look, except for I forgot three on the upper lid. But that's okay because I remember, luckily, sometimes I don't remember and it makes me so mad. I'm using the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara here. It's absolutely my favorite mascara. I think I accidentally used the waterproof right here. And one thing I love about this mascara is that you don't have to use waterproof for it to be performing well. Like the non-waterproof works just as well. Here's where I'm remembering that there are two more rhinestones that go onto the lash line. So I'm just adding those in really quick right here. And you'll see, I also got a little bit of mascara on my eyelid and that's totally fine. Once it was dry, I just took a Q-tip and I was able to wipe it off. For lips, I'm taking the Makeup by Mario Ultra Suede Sculpting Lip Pencil and Daniel. I've been obsessed with this. I'm gonna go through this lip pencil so fast. It's so nice. I usually just use the NYX lip liners. And then I saw a TikTok where someone was saying that your lips have to be like super dry for those to even go on. And I realized that was very true. So I wanted to just splurge and treat myself to a nicer lip liner. And I did some research. This one had great reviews and I'm loving it. So if you can treat yourself, definitely try this. If not, go for Milani or go for the NYX lip liners. They're really good too. And for lipstick, I'm taking the YSL Yves Saint Laurent. Rouge Volupte Lipstick and number 44 Nude Lavalier, which translates to Nude Pendant. And here's the final look. I love it so much, you guys. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you want to see next. Maybe a favorites video. Bye!